Introduction This is the second of three videos identifying and explaining the neoliberal socio-economic dysfunction which is ironically being exposed by Taiwan's Stop Anti-Asian Hate campaign, drawing extensively on Taiwanese news reports, social commentary, and academic literature by Taiwanese scholars. At the beginning of the first video in this series, I read from a news report of a migrant worker in Taiwan who was killed by police. I will now return to that report and provide some additional details. As I mentioned previously, although this report is not graphic, some people may find the subject matter distressing, so use the timestamp in the video description to skip forward a few minutes if this may affect you. I will now read the news report again, adding details I removed previously, which revealed the incident's location, before providing additional commentary. Quote, A runaway migrant worker from Vietnam, who was an alleged car thief, was shot at least six times and killed by police on Thursday morning in Shinju County, northwestern Taiwan. According to the Liberty Times, the 27-year-old man jumped out of the small truck and started attacking the officers. Lee was punched in the face, resulting in a fractured nose and heavy bleeding. The officers used batons and pepper spray against the suspect, who then jumped into a nearby paddy field to flush his eyes with water and then threw stones at the officers. An officer allegedly warned he would use his firearm. However, the suspect did not stop and was seen dashing to the unoccupied police vehicle and about to drive it off. That prompted the armed officer, who was five meters away, to fire shots at him. A preliminary police investigation showed that the suspected thief was a Vietnamese migrant worker registered in Tainan, but he had been on the run for three years and allegedly had a history of stealing vehicles. Taiwanese police did not rule out the possibility that the Vietnamese man may have had a mental illness. End quote. As I mentioned when I read this article previously, this news report follows the same kind of script seen in US news reports, particularly when reporting on black people killed by police. Note how the news account repeatedly attempts to dehumanize and blame the victim of this police violence. The worker is never named. From the start of the report, they are referred to as a, quote, runaway, end quote, insinuating that they have illegally left their place of employment. They are implicitly criminalized by the phrases, quote, an alleged car thief, end quote, quote, on the run for three years, end quote, and, quote, a history of stealing cars, end quote. They are depicted as dangerously violent with the phrases, quote, started attacking the officers, end quote, and, quote, threw stones at the officers, end quote. And by reference to them punching an officer, quote, resulting in a fractured nose and heavy bleeding, end quote, and ignoring police warnings of the use of firearms. Finally, the police insinuate the Vietnamese man they killed, quote, may have had a mental illness, End quote, stigmatizing their victim further. Meanwhile, in the article, great efforts are made to exonerate the police, who are depicted as having only acted in self-defense, initially only using, quote, batons and pepper spray, end quote, allegedly warning they will shoot, and only firing as a last resort after having been, quote, prompted, end quote, by the victim. Remember, this news report is describing an unarmed migrant worker who was shot at least six times at close range by police, mainly from behind, and who died of their wounds. This video addresses these topics. 1. Southeast Asian migrants in Taiwan's media. 2. Taiwan's stop anti-Asian hate problem. Use the timestamps in the video description to navigate the content. Southeast Asian Migrants in Taiwan's Media That report I just read is typical of how Southeast Asian migrant workers are depicted in Taiwan news media. It should now start to become clear that in Taiwan, stop anti-Asian hate typically means stop anti-Asian hate directed by non-Asians at the Han Chinese diaspora living in Western countries. It certainly does not mean stop anti-Asian hate wherever it appears. It most definitely does not mean stop anti-Asian hate directed by Taiwanese towards Southeast Asian migrant workers in Taiwan. 
You might be wondering about the outcome of that particular incident between the police and the Vietnamese migrant worker. Was the officer charged? If so, with what offence? Was the officer found guilty? What was the aftermath? We'll return to that case in the next video. For now, let's look at the portrayal of Southeast Asian migrant workers in Taiwan's media. To examine this issue in detail, I'll be quoting extensively from an article published in 2016 by Xin Yi Zheng entitled On Migrant Workers' Social Status in Taiwan, a Critical Analysis of Mainstream News Discourse. It must be understood that Zheng's use of the term, quote, migrant workers, end quote, refers specifically to migrant workers from Southeast Asia and therefore excludes all migrant workers from the global north generally and Western nations in particular. Zheng's study analyzed 506 news articles mentioning migrant workers and originating either in Taiwanese media or originating in media owned by Chinese or Hong Kong media but also broadcast in Taiwanese media. She found, quote, only five portray migrant workers as contributing agents by showing how they offer assistance to Taiwanese society, end quote. She added, quote, the overall representation of migrant workers is the trope of the threat of Southeast Asian laborers, which creates a necessity for more forceful regulations and control, end quote. Zheng notes how Taiwanese media depictions of foreign workers describe them in dehumanized ways, particularly as similar to dangerous swarms of animals, using language such as, quote, fights broke out among foreign labor groups like wars between countries, end quote, and, quote, on Sundays or holidays, it is not difficult to spot a large group of foreign laborers congregating in every nook and cranny, end quote. News reports similarly describe the rise of foreign workers in Taiwan with language which represents them as a dangerous threat. Zheng provides quotations such as, quote, foreign laborers increase violently and the number will break 500,000 next year, end quote. And, quote, the army of foreign labor will explode alarmingly to 500,000 next year, end quote. She also quotes scaremongering phrases such as, quote, the number of foreign laborers is completely out of control, end quote, and pathologizing descriptions of the use of foreign workers as, quote, an addiction that cannot be removed in Taiwan's labor market, end quote. Zheng notes news articles on migrant workers typically use, quote, language of criminality and legality, end quote, and describe migrants who break their contract to leave their employment as, quote, escaped, end quote, or, quote, runaway, end quote, workers. Personally, I find those terms particularly ironic since they tacitly identify such migrant workers as ex-slaves, which is, in many ways, an appropriate description given their usual working conditions. Zheng counts words such as escaped and runaway used of migrant workers, quote, more than 380 times in 506 news articles, end quote. She also adds that such articles commonly omit the reason why workers left their employers in the first place, despite the fact that many of them only take such a dangerous risk after their working conditions become unbearable. This leaves the Taiwanese public to form their own opinions on why migrant workers might take the dangerous risk of breaking a contract in order to leave their job without notice. It is unlikely that such opinions will be favorable given that news articles which do provide reasons for migrant workers leaving their employers always attribute the worst possible motives to them. Zheng quotes articles saying migrant workers left due to, quote, wanting more money for an easy life, end quote, or, quote, didn't want to work, end quote, or, quote, inability to manage hard working conditions, end quote, observing that this reflects Taiwanese views that migrant workers do not share the same work ethic as themselves. News media also commonly represents foreign laborers as a crime threat. Zheng quotes a report in 2014 citing the police bureau's intention to begin a, quote, 
more aggressive search in locations frequented by foreign laborers, end quote, and justifying this with a claim of, quote, an increasing trend of crime committed by them, end quote. Zheng observes that news reports rarely name migrant workers, saying they are typically described as, quote, a male or female escaped Wai Lao, end quote. The word Wai Lao simply means foreign worker. Zheng also notes that news reports usually do not provide any statements from the workers themselves and usually paraphrase them even if their words are used. However, Zheng notes, quote, their Southeast Asian origins are kept in the forefront of the reporting, end quote. Taiwanese news reports on migrant workers are also highly gendered, following well-established tropes. Zheng notes that articles on women often describe sex traffic victims who have been discovered by the government's immigration officers. This not only reinforces stereotypes about Southeast Asian women's sexuality and suspicions that they come to Taiwan to gain money through sex work, but also depicts the government as a caring and paternal figure rescuing these sexually deviant migrant women from the error of their ways. If migrant women are not victims, Zheng says, news reports, quote, emphasized their femininity, end quote. She cites a number of news reports on a Vietnamese migrant worker who was caught by police after having illegally left her employer, noting that one news report commented on her, quote, beauty and soft-spoken sweet manner, end quote. Zheng adds that after the worker's photo was publicized in the media, local Taiwanese men contacted the police station with proposals of marriage, which Zheng says, quote, generated more news on her femininity, end quote. In another case, Zheng describes a report on, quote, an Indonesian college graduate migrant worker named Jessica who was arrested by an immigration officer, end quote. Zheng quotes a Taiwanese news report describing the migrant worker as a, quote, hot chick, end quote, and, quote, Jessica, height 166 centimeters, weight 50 kilograms, with big watery eyes, end quote. Sexual stereotyping of migrant women in Taiwan news media also includes characterizing them as having undisciplined sex lives. Zheng quotes a report on children born to undocumented workers, which claimed, quote, it is not uncommon to see female foreign laborers giving birth outside of marriage, end quote. This completely neglects to mention the migrant working women who are enticed into sexual relationships with local men by promises of marriage and citizenship which are never fulfilled, or who become pregnant as a result of rape by local men, such as their employers, or who give birth to children fathered by Taiwanese ex-husbands who have already divorced and abandoned them. Zheng writes that Taiwanese news media also sexualizes migrant working men, though they are typically represented as a sexual threat rather than as victims of sexual crime. In particular, migrant working men are depicted as a threat to local Taiwanese women. Zheng quotes a news report saying, quote, escaped foreign laborers create many societal problems. The police caught an escaped foreign laborer who hid at the riverbank to rob women who were exercising. End quote. The image of migrant working men as a constant criminal threat is pervasive. Deng further explains how Taiwanese women are, quote, often reported as victims who are preyed upon by male migrant workers and rescued by Taiwanese men, end quote, citing a China Times article in which a migrant working man from Vietnam was accused of harassing, quote, a college woman, end quote, who was then rescued by, quote, a male soldier who testified to bring the Vietnamese man to justice, end quote. Taiwan's relatively conservative Han Chinese culture values social conformity and looks with suspicion on actions which are seen to stray beyond established norms. Migrant workers are particularly vulnerable to scrutiny due to their high visibility when in public places and are often described in media as having aberrant behavior which is implied to be deviant. Zheng observes that undocumented workers are sometimes described as having been detected and captured due to their, quote, abnormal, end quote, behavior, such as, quote, walking with luggage while glancing around, end quote, quote, unfamiliar faces looking around, end quote, quote, 
gathering to have a meal in the morning, end quote, and, quote, carrying too many personal belongings, end quote. Such behavior by Taiwanese would not be considered necessarily suspicious, even if it was regarded as unusual. But when performed by migrant workers, it is viewed as clear evidence of social disobedience and implicit criminality. Other tropes associated with migrant workers by Taiwanese media include cruelty to animals and the consumption of unclean or socially repugnant food, such as cat and dog meat. Zheng quotes a news article shared on Facebook which described, quote, Southeast Asian foreign laborers killing and removing the fur of dogs and cats, end quote. Importantly, this article took care to differentiate this behavior from Taiwan's social norms, saying, quote, even though consuming cats and dogs in winter is legal in some of the foreign laborers' home countries, it is forbidden in Taiwan, end quote. It is ironic that an old racist trope traditionally leveled by Western societies at Chinese and Korean immigrants is so commonly directed by Taiwanese at Southeast Asian immigrants to Taiwan. Zheng also notes migrant workers are frequently depicted by media as acting, quote, in an irrational, easily provoked, and emotionally unstable manner, end quote, which is then used to explain why bad things happen to them. This is a form of victim blaming which absolves Taiwanese society of any responsibility for misfortune which may befall migrant workers. As an example, Zheng cites a news article describing a fire in a dormitory housing foreign workers. This is a shockingly common event in Taiwan. Every year, there are several cases of migrant workers dying in fires which started in dormitories on company premises or in privately owned apartment buildings. Low wages prompt many migrant workers to seek cheap accommodation, so they often end up in living quarters which do not conform to building construction safety codes or fire safety regulations. Zheng's quotation of a news report on one such fire described how, quote, concerned neighbors, end quote, commented that, quote, there are more than 10 Thai laborers residing there without much management, end quote. Note the implication that foreign laborers are intrinsically unruly and consequently require management. Neighbors cited in the article also listed, quote, late night drinking, end quote, quote, loud conversations, end quote, and indoor barbecue parties as examples of the Thai laborers' aberrant behavior and further described the migrant workers as, quote, a ticking time bomb, end quote, attributing the fire to, quote, either their barbecuing or their lack of common sense with electricity usage, end quote. Note how the Thai laborers are not only held responsible for the fire, but it is also attributed either to their unruly cooking practices or simply their lack of basic intelligence and familiarity with modern technology. Zheng also observes how social fear of foreign laborers has been exploited for political purposes, citing the Democratic Progressive Party, the second largest party in Taiwan's duopoly, assuring the public it will address the alleged problem of, quote, ghost towns of foreign laborers, end quote, areas supposedly occupied by large numbers of undocumented migrant workers. Local migrant labor advocacy groups, often largely formed and staffed by migrant workers themselves, have attempted for years to overcome the legal, social, and political barriers they face. Occasionally, there is incremental change, but more often, there is only a superficial appearance of improvement. As an example, in 2017, Taiwan's National Immigration Agency announced its decision to abandon the term, quote, illegal runaway foreign workers, end quote, in Chinese, Fei Fa Tao Pao Wai Lao and replace it with the term quote, unaccounted for foreign workers, end quote. In Chinese, Si Lian Wai Lao. However, despite this decision, the term remains in wide use by the media and other government organizations. An article on the website of Taichung City Government's Labor Affairs Bureau, published on the 20th of March 2021, warns migrant laborers, quote, runaway or illegal foreign workers will be repatriated, end quote. Even Taiwanese media sympathetic to the plight of migrant workers occasionally still uses the term, 
One example is an article on the online Commonwealth magazine, a 40-year-old progressive media outlet aimed at social improvement. An article published in 2018 uses the term, quote, runaway migrant workers, end quote, even while expressing sympathy for the workers and their lack of legal rights. To complete this section, let's look at a news article published on the 5th of March 2020, which pathologized migrant workers as a COVID-19 health risk. This article is particularly relevant as an example of a combination of virtually every negative trope directed by Taiwanese society at Southeast Asian migrant workers, demonstrating just how pervasive such attitudes and language are. The article was published in the Taipei Times, Taiwan's only printed daily English newspaper with a 20-year history. This newspaper is one of the most widely read media sources by foreign immigrants to Taiwan, since both its print and online articles are written in English. Consequently, it must be understood that its articles have been written with a foreign audience in mind. This speaks volumes about what the Taiwanese authors wish to communicate to foreigners about their position in Taiwanese society. The article starts by noting that in Taiwan, quote, people have been diligently following the disease control measures announced by the government, end quote, in response to the COVID-19 epidemic. It then identifies Taiwan's most recent COVID-19 case as, quote, a runaway migrant worker who was working illegally as a caregiver, end quote. Note how the article immediately invokes the tropes of runaway and working illegally. Ironically, the article describes that the worker, quote, was infected by a coronavirus patient while caring for him in a hospital, end quote. So the migrant worker was actually infected and endangered by a Taiwanese citizen, quite contrary to the typical racist trope. However, the article's author wastes no time on sympathy for the migrant worker, instead complaining that, quote, the Ministry of Labor's inaction has turned Taiwan into a paradise for runaway migrant workers, end quote alleging, quote, more than 50,000 such illegals scattered nationwide, end quote. The use of the word paradise is particularly distasteful given the immense difficulties faced by migrant workers in Taiwan at the best of times, and the fact that their quality of life typically plunges to abysmal depths when they become undocumented workers. The author then pathologized these Southeast Asian migrant workers, representing them as an imminent health threat, writing, quote, with an epidemic looming, these thousands of runaways have become an unknown quantity and a potential breach in the wall of disease prevention, end quote. Returning to the case of the migrant caregiver mentioned previously, the author extends the metaphor of migrant workers as vectors of disease, asking rhetorically, quote, who knows how many more potential virus carriers might be working, end quote. The author places blame for this situation on the government, claiming, quote, the ministry's laws and regulations governing the management of migrant workers are lax, end quote. Consequently, the author asserts, quote, runaways feel they have nothing to fear, end quote, saying that the only punishment they face is deportation, quote, with a free airplane ticket added to the bargain, end quote. This is the kind of racist and xenophobic rhetoric which could be expected from white supremacists in the West, Yet in Taiwan, it reflects mainstream Taiwanese social and media discourse on Southeast Asian migrant workers. On the 31st of March 2021, an article on the Focus Taiwan website cited Joanne O. O Jiang An of Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, saying the ministry, quote, condemns all forms of violence targeting Asians and expressed condolences to the victims of anti-Asian hate crimes, end quote asserting, quote, Taiwan's government has always upheld human rights and has full respect for diversity and tolerance among cultures, end quote. O was also cited as, quote, urging discrimination targeting Asians to stop, end quote. That last statement is particularly poignant. When O urges an end to, quote, discrimination targeting Asians, end quote, what does she mean? As we have seen, what she really means is what Taiwanese citizens typically mean when protesting anti-Asian hate. She means stop anti-Asian hate directed by non-Asians at the Han Chinese diaspora living in Western countries. She does not actually mean 
stop discrimination targeting Asians. And she definitely does not mean stop Taiwanese exploitation of and hateful racism and discrimination towards Southeast Asian migrant workers. Taiwan's Stop Anti-Asian Hate Problem In this section, we'll examine Taiwan's Stop Anti-Asian Hate Problem in further detail and observe how social justice movements in the U.S. during 2020 and 2021 have prompted serious inspection by Taiwanese progressives who recognize the relevance of these movements to their own country. In order to understand why Taiwan has a stop anti-Asian hate problem, we must return to the 1990s, when Taiwan finally opened its borders to migrant workers. The fact is that Taiwan's widely praised neoliberal economic boom benefited significantly from the exploitation of these migrant workers. Taiwan has a stop anti-Asian hate problem because stopping anti-Asian hate in Taiwan requires a socio-economic uplifting of Southeast Asian migrant workers in Taiwan, which would have serious financial and social consequences for the industrial and domestic sectors which currently exploit such workers. Let's begin by examining a 1996 article entitled Recruiting and Managing of Foreign Workers in Taiwan, published by Joseph S. Lee and Su Wan Wang in the Asian and Pacific Migration Journal. Significantly, although only five years had passed since migrant workers started arriving in Taiwan, the article already expresses alarm over what it calls, quote, the biggest issue in the Taiwanese labor migration policy, the runaway foreign workers, end quote. The article laments that, quote, illegal migration cannot be controlled, end quote and consequently advises the government, quote, to limit employment of migrants only where it is absolutely necessary, end quote. However, Taiwan's growing need for labor quickly outstripped conservative objections to immigration, and by 2017, 93.3% of all foreign nationals in Taiwan were from Southeast Asia. Overall, however, Taiwan has been able to preserve its status as an ethnostate, with the Han Chinese ethnic group comprising 95.4% of the population, indigenous people 2.4%, and foreign nationals only 2.2%. Taiwanese attitudes to immigration remain extremely conservative and particularly hostile to Southeast Asian migrants. In 2019, Han Guoyu, mayor of Kaohsiung, Taiwan's second largest city, complained about talented Taiwanese professionals moving overseas while low-skilled migrants entered Taiwan, describing the situation as, quote, phoenixes flying away and a bunch of chickens coming in, end quote. Han's comments caused considerable disturbance and social commentary among the immigrant community. In response, he clarified that he didn't object to migrant workers as such. Instead, he insisted he was objecting to those who come to Taiwan to, quote, cause trouble, end quote. Han explained that, in his view, the real problem was that the government lacked the resources to screen immigrant workers effectively, resulting in many entering the country with dishonorable motives. He claimed, quote, Customs officers are very suspicious about their purpose in Taiwan. Especially recently, many prostitutes and illegal workers have been found in Taiwan, end quote. Understandably, Han's clarifying comments which simply repeated and reinforced long-standing racist tropes about immigrant workers arriving with the intent to commit crime and implying that Southeast Asian immigrant women were entering Taiwan with the aim of entering prostitution, did nothing to clear him from charges of prejudice and discrimination. However, Han's view on Southeast Asian migrant workers are by no means rare in Taiwan. In December 2019, an academic study of Taiwanese attitudes towards migration was conducted at the National Zhengzhou University in Taiwan. Taiwanese respondents indicated they were quite strongly unsupportive of immigration in general and particularly hostile to Southeast Asian immigrants. Only 28.6% agreed that Taiwan should encourage immigration. Although 77.4% agreed that Taiwan should encourage immigration of skilled workers, when this was qualified further, most respondents strongly disagreed with the immigration of skilled workers from Southeast Asia.
Only 8.1% agreed that Taiwan should encourage immigration from Vietnam, and only 20.6% agreed that Taiwan should encourage immigration of skilled workers from Vietnam. 4% agreed that Taiwan should encourage immigration from the Philippines, while only 23.8% agreed that Taiwan should encourage immigration of skilled workers from the Philippines. Finally, a mere 3.2% agreed that Taiwan should encourage immigration from Indonesia, and only 22.2% agreed that Taiwan should encourage immigration of skilled workers from Indonesia. These results reflect deep-seated and long-standing Taiwanese prejudice against immigrants from any country, but especially those from the Southeast Asia Pacific region. In an article in Taiwan's online news outlet Gadalagan Media, journalist Hilton Yip stated bluntly, quote, "The truth is that Taiwan's tranquility masks serious exploitation of foreigners, especially from developing countries, as well as discrimination against foreigners." End quote. He noted in particular, quote, poor treatment of foreign Southeast Asian workers, end quote, which he described as widespread, and, quote, discriminatory policies and behavior towards non-Taiwanese residents, end quote. While Yip wrote Taiwanese are typically not, quote, outwardly racist, end quote, he also noted, quote, an ethnocentric way of thinking that facilitates discriminatory attitudes, end quote describing, quote, a tendency to regard some non-locals, especially from Southeast Asia, as lesser beings, end quote. To illustrate his point, Yip cited Taiwan's fishing industry, which is notorious for its appalling treatment of foreign workers. Yip wrote grimly, quote, beatings are not uncommon, nor are wage deductions and coercion of workers to remain on board their ships, end quote. Yip provided additional examples of exploitation in the fishing industry, such as the human trafficking of foreign crew members and immigrant workers not being registered with the government by their employers, depriving them of legal representation and rights such as labor and health insurance. Yip went on to describe other instances of migrant labor exploitation, citing an infamous example of Southeast Asian students from the Philippines, Indonesia, and Sri Lanka who were enrolled in local Taiwan universities, which then hired them out to local factories to perform manual labor. The factories paid the universities, and the students were given nothing, simply being told that they were in work-study programs which were necessary for their courses. In response, in 2019, Indonesia forbade its students from entering any work-study programs in Taiwan. Yip also recalled the incident in 2020 when the Taiwan Railways Administration, TRA, banned people from sitting in the large open hall of Taipei Main Station, the Metropolitan Rail Network's primary transport hub. This area has long been used by migrant workers as a gathering place for meals and socialization on their few days off. In the past, the TRA has expressed its barely veiled dissatisfaction with the use of this space by migrant workers, a sentiment which has been echoed by many members of the Taiwanese public, some of whom have written letters to news organizations protesting that migrant workers should not be permitted to use the space in this way. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the TRA prohibited anyone from using the space for socialization and recreation, citing the need to maintain social distancing. However, later in the year, the TRA declared that they would continue this ban indefinitely even after social distancing restrictions were lifted. This was clearly an attempt to exploit the pandemic to displace migrant workers permanently from a large public space which had become an extremely important social area to them. After protest from local migrant groups and some members of the public, and a comment from a city official announcing that the TRA did not have the authority to make such a ban permanent, the proposal was abandoned. Nevertheless, the sentiment behind it was clear. Prompted by the anti-Asian racism protest in Taiwan, an article in Taiwan's Taipei Times News Service observed that this was an appropriate moment for Taiwanese to reflect on their own ethnic prejudice. The article stated, quote, Despite Taiwan's human rights achievements, it is by no means free of racism, end quote. Identifying Taiwan's indigenous people and Southeast Asian migrant workers as 
as typical targets. The article also noted, quote, black people are also affected here, with several egregious incidents in the past year, including companies refusing to hire them, as well as performers donning blackface, end quote. The article's unnamed author also observed that, quote, in Taiwan, racist behavior does not usually manifest as violence, end quote, before astutely pointing out, quote, that makes it easier to pretend that it does not exist or is unrelated to what happens in the U.S., end quote. This is an incisive comment demonstrating how Taiwanese often justify their treatment of others to themselves. Although it is true that in Taiwan, racism typically does not take the form of public violence, a great deal of racially motivated private violence takes place behind closed doors, typically in the form of verbal, physical, and sexual abuse of Southeast Asian migrant domestic workers who live highly closeted lives in Taiwanese households where they are typically significantly isolated from society and where violence by their employers is concealed. However, there are also times when racialized violence in Taiwan becomes public. In 2013, after a Taiwanese fisherman had been shot by the Philippine Coast Guard, who claimed a Taiwanese fishing vessel had entered Philippine sovereign waters, Taiwanese locals protested in Taipei, gathering at the Philippine Economic and Cultural Office and hurling eggs at it while shouting their disdain for the Philippines. If the incident had been confined to egg throwing, it would have been little more than a temporary embarrassment, but there was much worse to come. There was also an outbreak of public discrimination by Taiwanese against Filipinos in Taiwan, some of whom were verbally abused and one of whom was attacked physically with a baseball bat. In response to the highly volatile situation, the Philippine government recommended any Philippine nationals in Taiwan stay at home or take direct commutes to work for their own safety out of fear of, quote, hate assaults, end quote. Amadeo Perez Jr., a Philippine government representative in Taiwan, was cited as saying, quote, we advise Filipinos not to leave their homes as much as possible, end quote. Returning to the Taipei Times editorial cited previously, the author also made the perceptive observation that, quote, racism is racism, regardless of the form it takes and the offender's intent, end quote, before suggesting that people in Taiwan should be paying more attention to events in the U.S., which might, quote, cause people in Taiwan to reflect on their behavior and be more sympathetic for their own people living in fear and being abused in another country, end quote. In 2020, an article in the China Post by journalist Saloni Magnani commented on the Black Lives Matter rally which had recently been held in Taiwan, noting that, quote, although discrimination here is not as blatant or violent compared to the U.S., end quote, the rally nevertheless, quote, granted the perfect opening to revisit pre-existing racial issues, end quote. Magnani rightly observed that, quote, Taiwanese people evaluate other cultures based on prejudices and notions that have become standards in their own culture, end quote. However, she also went on to comment specifically on the mistreatment of Southeast Asian migrant workers in Taiwan, citing the poor working conditions and numerous abuses from which they suffer. Noting that, quote, these people are exploited because they come from less developed nations, end quote, Magnani also described how dark-skinned people in Taiwan are automatically rejected when applying for certain jobs, and how, quote, on public transport, there is palpable hesitation towards sitting near dark-skinned foreigners or migrant workers, end quote. In March 2021, an incident of prejudice against a migrant worker went public, prompting criticism and at least some introspection. Following an arbitration dispute, an employer deliberately paid their migrant worker 8,938 Taiwanese dollars in Taiwanese $1 coins, spitefully presenting the worker with a massive pile of thousands and thousands of unwieldy coins to carry. An article in the Taiwan News Service noted that the local post office to which the employee took the coins, since Taiwan's National Postal Service also runs a bank, quote, helped the employee count the coins and convert them to paper money, end quote. Public comment on the situation deplored the Taiwanese employer as callous and mean-spirited, while considerable sympathy was expressed for the migrant worker. The Taiwan News article noted that, quote, during four years as a caregiver 
the foreign employee was forced to help out with the head of the family's food truck business, causing overwork and exhaustion, end quote. Outrageously, such working conditions for migrant workers are common enough in Taiwan to be unsurprising, though no less deplorable for the fact. Returning to the China Post article by Saloni Magnani, the journalist proposed a change in Taiwan's local culture. Although outrage at the poor treatment of migrant workers is often expressed by members of the Taiwan public when the worst cases of abuse are reported in the news media, from day to day, the same people who voice such outrage are themselves perpetuating a system which both creates and empowers the environment in which such abuse is made possible. As Magnani put it, quote, people need to be chided for their doctrinal actions that have aided and abetted a toxic and racist environment, end quote. Although considerable attention was drawn to the Stop Anti-Asia Hate Rally in Taiwan in March 2021, far less publicity was given to an earlier rally of the same size in the same month. Brian Hyo, journalist at Taiwan's New Bloom magazine, a socially progressive online publication, reported that this rally was a demonstration in front of Taiwan's parliament, quote, calling attention to the plight faced by female migrant workers in Taiwan, end quote. It is both significant and symptomatic that a rally attempting to raise awareness of the challenges facing migrant workers in Taiwan received much less attention than a rally concerned with anti-Asian racism aimed at Taiwanese Americans in the U.S., Hyo's article described how female migrant workers are, quote, paid below minimum wage, end quote, despite, quote, working over 10 hours a day, end quote. He also cited their lack of labor rights, including the fact that they are only allowed one day off a week and are not paid for overtime work. Hyo explained that the March 2021 protest was calling on Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen to act on her administration's commitment in 2016 to, quote, pass the Household Services Act, end quote, which would provide a wide range of labor protections and rights for immigrant workers, including more humane working hours, insurance plans, and workplace injury compensation. To date, however, these commitments have not yet been met. Again, it should be remembered that a rally for migrant workers asking the government to fulfill promises made to them five years previously received considerably less enthusiastic news coverage in Taiwan than a rally by Taiwanese people against anti-Asian racism directed against Taiwanese in America. Meanwhile, as of March 2021, the government was still expressing reluctance to pass the Household Services Act, which would relieve the plight of migrant workers on the grounds that it lacked the resources. However, in his article, Hyo noted that the real reason for the government's failure to enact the legislation was, quote, opposition from brokers, end quote. The local Taiwan employment agencies, which Southeast Asian migrant workers are required to use in order to find jobs. These brokers charge employees a job finding fee, typically at exploitative rates. Brokers also find ways of charging migrant workers a range of other fees, many of which are illegal. Since migrant workers are dependent on the brokers for jobs, and since migrants are not permitted to change jobs without approval from their broker, the brokers have enormous control over them and are able to coerce them into unfavorable working conditions and pressure them into staying in abusive work environments. Conclusion Taiwan's attitude to the US Stop Anti-Asian Hate campaign has been somewhat ambivalent. On the one hand, it has received considerable publicity in online media and social media, as both journalists and the public use it to express typical Taiwanese solidarity for expatriate Taiwanese citizens living overseas, especially in the US. On the other hand, it has received very little in the way of practical action, and there has been almost no support at all for more active engagement of the issue in the form of in-person public rallies, marches, and protests. As demonstrated previously, the main reason for this is that Taiwanese people typically do not see the Stop Anti-Asia Hate campaign as personally relevant to themselves, since they are the dominant social group in a Han Chinese ethnostate, holding positions of privilege and power over all other ethnic groups. 
the idea of a local Taiwanese person in Taiwan being subjected to anti-Asian hate is understandably alien to them. However, the anti-Asian hate campaign illuminates the broader issue of Taiwanese blindness to the systemic anti-Asian hate directed by systems of oppression towards Southeast Asian migrants in Taiwan, particularly migrant workers. These systems of oppression are typically mediated and maintained through the media, legislature, police force, and judiciary. However, the majority of Taiwanese people are also complicit in these systems, either directly or indirectly, deliberately or incidentally. It must be noted that there are local Taiwanese who do identify, call out, and resist these oppressive systems, and who have joined in solidarity with migrant workers at various levels and through various means. In his article covering the Stop Anti-Asian Hate Rally in March this year, Daniel Yoling Chen quoted one Taiwanese speaker identifying the, quote, ethnic supremacism and racialized misogyny, end quote, directed by Taiwanese at Southeast Asian migrants in Taiwan. Chen also wrote, quote, other speakers similarly emphasized the need to stand with migrant workers in Taiwan as part of the march against racism and misogyny, end quote. However, it is interesting to note that an actual public rally for the rights of Southeast Asian migrant workers had taken place just two weeks prior to this event and received virtually no local support at all. Equally significantly, none of the migrant worker support groups attended the Stop Anti-Asian Hate rally. These facts are sympathetic of the highly isolated position of migrant workers in broader Taiwan society and the relatively poor degree of support for them even among Taiwan's more liberal and progressive communities. The next video in this series will examine two particularly challenging issues with regard to the anti-Asian hate directed at migrant workers in Taiwan. Firstly, how Taiwanese feminism exploits migrant workers, and secondly, police violence against migrant workers in Taiwan. Finally, I'd like to thank my generous patrons. Elias Asvig, Chloe, Duran Barnett, Alexander Curzon, Sean A. Young, Andy Chaos, Tibby LTP, Thors, Fake Name, Niels Rethlin, Judge Sabo, Matthew Simmerall, Thomas Leonard, Martin T, Ben Lindquist, John Larkin, Jack C, Ezekiel Stacy, and Love You More. Please contact me if I ever pronounce your name incorrectly. Mm-hmm.